Okay, I'm going to walk you through um, as an inter as by way of an introduction to poetry, um, some suggestions for approaching poetry, um, and some also some questions for responsive reading and writing. We did this with short stories uh, where I talked about how to analyze a short story, break it down. Um, and so I wanted to do the same thing. Uh, a lot of the same principles apply with poetry, but there are a few different things that I just want to make you aware of. Some terms that you may want to familiarize yourself with um, when you're reading uh, and, and writing about poetry. So um, just briefly, I want to walk you through... Um, I want to walk you through how to approach poetry uh, as you start this unit. So I want you to first assume that it's going to be necessary to read a poem more than one time. Um, I chose purposely, I chose poems that were not too lengthy for this very reason as a by, a by way of an introduction to analyzing poetry. Um, you are not going to get all the meaning that you need in order to be able to write and analyze a poem just through one dry read. Um, you know, you need to open up your mind to reading it multiple times in, in order to uh, really extract and unpack that meaning. Pay attention to the title. Oftentimes, the title provides a helpful context for the poem. Um, and not only paying attention to it, but after you finish reading it, looking back at the title and, and wondering why the author chose to, to title the poem in with that, that particular title. As you read a poem for the first time, try to avoid being becoming bogged down in the words or the lines that you don't understand. Give yourself a chance to take in the entire poem before you start trying to figure out um, those areas that you have questions with. That's why that first read is so important. Um, on your second reading, that's when you go back in and start asking yourself questions, identifying any words and passages that you don't understand. You know, look up any words that you don't know, uh, even literary terms. Um, uh, dictionary definitions, uh, places, uh, mythical references, historical references. If it references a story in the Bible, familiarize yourself with those things. Anything that's unfamiliar to you, that's only going to aid you in understanding the poem better. Read the poem aloud in as natural a voice as possible with slight pauses at the line breaks and punctuations. Poems use punctuation marks. Um, authors use punctuation marks uh, in addition to those spaces on the page as signals. So be careful not to assume that the end of a line marks the end of a sentence. Look at this um, poem here by... Um, from or this excerpt from Hathaway's OO. My girl and I amble a country lane. You have a comma there. So we know that it's going to continue on. I'm going to pause naturally at that comma. Moo cows chomping daisies. There's another pause of the comma. Our own sweet saliva gra green with grass stems. Well, in that second line there, you have that comma that's a natural pause after daisies, but our own doesn't have a punctuation at the end. So the end of that line is actually wrapped around into the next line. Our own sweet saliva green with grass stem. So you got to think about that when you're thinking about meaning, that you don't just assume that the end of a line means the end of a sentence, okay? Okay. It won't make sense that way. Keep track of those subjects and verbs uh, uh, as you go along. Put into your own words. Paraphrase the poem to determine whether you understand what's going on. Paraphrase is going to help you to see which uh, things need further attention, further clarification. If you can't break it down into words, uh, into your own words, then you need to read it again. You need to go back in and try to unpack the meaning. Try to get a sense of who is speaking, what the setting is, what the situation is. Don't assume, though, that the speaker is the author. So like Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven, Edgar Allan Poe is not the character in the poem. The, 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 the man in The Raven is a created character of Edgar Allan Poe. So don't confuse the two. 
Okay. Assume that each element in the poem has a purpose. The author's word choice, the author's way to structure the poem, the, the syntax, uh, the imagery, the symbolism, every element works together. It's a constructed idea to help bring the poem together and give it meaning. So try to explain to yourself how those different elements of the poems are working together to do those things. Okay. Be willing to understand, I mean, I'm sorry, to entertain perspectives, values, experiences, and subjects that you might not agree with or approve of. At the beginning of the short story, actually the beginning of this course, we read a short poem, um, You Fit Into Me by Margaret Atwood, and I told you that we all bring different perspectives to a text, and that therefore reading is subjective, reading is ambiguous, meaning is ambiguous. So think about then how you even your perspective, but be willing to entertain that there are multiple perspectives or multiple uh, meanings that can be um, can be applied to a, a text. So be willing to entertain those. Don't just assume that your way is the right way. Um, that's what makes someone a good reader, a good um, analyzer of a text. Don't expect to that every poem is going to tie up neatly, close all loose ends um, into one definitive reading. So many poems don't resolve all of their issues um, or, or, or their ideas. Uh, you may not know the ending. It may have an ambiguous ending. So think about those things uh, when you're reading, okay? There's not an absolute. There's not always an absolute. Sometimes there is, but there's not, it's not always. Um, another thing um, I wanted to include were some questions that you can start asking yourself um, as you read and write about poetry. Now, this is not, a, 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 you know, an ex a list that's definitive, like you need to sit down and answer all these questions about a poem. However, if you're trying to uncover meaning, if you're trying to unpack what's happening, if you're analyzing, these are just some good questions that you can learn to ask yourself as you read. Um, the words that I put in bold are literary terms. They're all, the literary terms, again, are defined for you in your book, in the back, in the glossary. So if you come across one that's unfamiliar, uh, make sure you go and look it up so that you understand um, what that literary element is uh, so that you can write about it more fully. So here's just some questions. I'm going to run through this list really quick and just kind of explain any of them that need further explanation. We talked about identifying the speaker. Is it possible for you to determine how old the speaker is, the sex of the speaker? Um, their awareness of what's happening or what's happening to them. Is the speaker speaking to anyone in particular? Is it just in general, uh, like talking to the world or talking to a wide audience? Or is there a hidden audience within each poem? How do you respond? What's your mood? What mood is created in you as you read? Um, the the poem. How do you respond to uh, that speaker? Do you feel favorably towards them? Do you feel negative towards them? Uh, you feel favorably or negatively towards the situation? Is there a setting, specific setting and time and place? Is it general or is it very specific? Because that can help aid in your understanding, your analysis of the poem. Does reading it out loud help you to understand it? I think I've mentioned this multiple times over the course of, of 101 and 102. Reading something out loud it hits different uh, than it does when you're reading silently. You you may uncover more uh, by reading reading things out loud. You can hear uh, things, things that you don't even realize that you uh, may or may not understand if you're reading silently to yourself. Does paraphrasing help reveal the basic purpose of the poem? You breaking it down into your own words, does that help you um, um, assign meaning or unpack meaning in a poem? What does the title emphasize? Is the theme, the overall um, idea of the poem, is it presented directly or is it indirect? You just gain a sense of the theme by what you're reading. Do any allusions enrich the poem's meaning? Allusions being uh, references to other texts, um, to the Bible, to uh, Greek and Latin myths. Do those allusions help enrich the poem's meaning? Does understanding those allusions help enrich the poem's meaning? How does the diction reveal meaning? 
but the author's word choice is specific. Um, it's a it's a it's a character within itself that the author has constructed. He has made, or he or she has made those specific choices on the language that they use. Are any words repeated? If they're repeated, they might be important. Do any of the words carry connotative meanings? Like the word home in the dictionary is one thing, but connotative is the meaning that you apply to a word, and everybody's connotative meanings can be differently. Home is different for each one of us. Um, does the, the writer use any puns or any other forms of verbal wit or irony to, to enrich the poem? Do they use figures of speech, similes, metaphors? How does that language, that figurative language, contribute to the poem's meaning? Do any objects, persons, places, events, or actions have any allegorical or symbolic meanings? What other details in the poem help support that interpretation? Is irony used? Are there situational irony, verbal irony, dramatic irony? Is there understatement or paradox used within the poem? Those can all, um, they, they can all impact the meaning of the poem. What is the tone? That's the author's attitude. Is it consistent all the way through? Does it start out one tone and change, undergo change throughout the poem? Does the poem use sound effects, onomatopoeia, assonance, consonants, and alliteration, and how do those sounds impact the meaning? How do they affect you as the reader? Do, are there any sounds that are repeated, like rhyme sounds? Are they repeated? What effect does that give you? Does it seem forced or natural? Is there a rhyme scheme, which means that the author follows the same scheme throughout the poem? And do that, does that help contribute to the meaning? Do the lines have a regular meter? Is there a regular um, pattern of stress and unstressed syllables along the way that help enforce the poem's meaning? Is that rhythm appropriate for the poem's meaning and effects? Does the poem's form or its structure follow a pattern? Do you think that the form is suitable vehicle for the poem's meaning and effects? And is the language of the poem intense and concentrated? Do you think that it needs to be read multiple more times because it's intense or concentrated? You need more time or more exposure to the poem to understand meaning. Okay, so all of these questions will help you, and these tips, these suggestions, will help you become a better analyzer of poetry. Um, and, and, and honestly, um, you know, literature is subjective, but understanding those literary terms, those literary elements, um, will only make you a stronger reader and a writer. You got to know before you can grow, before you can write about things. So um, take these to heart. Look up any unfamiliar terms that you have and start asking yourself these questions and using these tips when you analyze poetry for this class.